All right, folks, hopefully this is recording. What we have here is a 12 volt, 12 amp hour lithium ion battery from Ampere Time. It is the uh, first time I've used one of these batteries, tried one of these batteries. Um, so this is gonna be exciting. And what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna take a look at this battery. And what I wanna do is I want to make a cable for it. Now I have not opened this yet. This is, we're enjoying this moment together. Um, this battery came a couple days ago, so here it is. I don't know what this number is on there. I guess it's a serial number or something. But when we take a look at this battery, uh, it has these terminals on here, and I believe they're called F2 terminals. And we want to be careful with these because we don't want to drop something on here and bridge them in short and, and cause all kinds of problems. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a cable like this. It's going to have power poles on one end, and instead of these, it's going to have the appropriate connectors that we can just connect here. And then that way we can charge our battery, we can, we can use our battery, whatever we want to do. So here is the battery, uh, amp your time, and then here is your manufacturer contact service. And here it is, talks about what you can do with this battery and what you can't do. We're going to use this battery uh, primarily as a power source for portable stuff, uh, mostly around uh, ham radio or amateur radio, but also be able to charge doodads and knickknacks like uh, iPhones and iPads. So the first thing I want to do is I believe these are called F2 connectors, and that is a standard size. This would be your positive and this would be your negative. Uh, what I want to do is I actually want to measure these. They should be around four. Uh, there we go. It's 6.3. That's right. 6.3. Uh, millimeters and that looks like it's about right so what I want to do is I have this box of parts here and let's take a look and uh, see if I can get this box of parts opened up all right and here is where we have these connectors and uh, it looks like they come with these plastic Teflon doohickuses that you can put on here to protect protect these and provide a layer of insulation so let me just see if this goes and it fits on there. And it does. It's going to be a snug fit, but uh, it, it will go on there. Let me be right. I'm going to come right back. Let me dig up some cable and uh, we can get started on the project. Okay, so we're back. And uh, this is the cable that we're going to use or the wire that we're going to use. And folks will say, well, why are you using that particular wire ape? I'm using this because it was in the parts box and it was at the top and I didn't have to go digging for it. Um, here you can see where I've done some work on this wire in a previous life, and it is copper wire, so that's good. Um, there's some writing on here, but I'm not entirely sure what it says, so let me get out my enhanced, my enhanced reading device. Somewhat embarrassing that I have to do this, but uh, let's see what, see what we have on here. And it says, Chang Fu AV 1.5 millimeter. So there you go. That's that's what we're going to use. Boy, it's a mess over there. All right, well, the first thing I'm going to do is it's got these curved memory ends on here. And so we're just going to fix that real quick like this. Now, I'm not entirely sure how much wire I'm going to need. So let me just hold these up together and we're going to go with that much. And so let me come over here and uh, go ahead and clip this and clip that all right the wires back in the parts bin so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our f2 connectors on here and uh, to do that we have this pair of ratchet uh, crimpers ratcheting crimpers the way these work is they have a gear in here and as you close them they stick until you ratchet them all the way down and, and everything is done. Uh, there is a release on here. So as, if you get stuck right here, somewhere right around here is a button. There you go. There's a button that you can use to release right here. In the event that you get stuck. <clears throat> now, the other thing is that we need to pay attention to these. Um, I don't know what you call them grips dikes forms i don't i don't know but uh, this is for using on connectors like this that are open see how that's open um, and then right here you should see a little bit of an arc or an arch so when you go ahead and you squeeze these it bends it around so let me get the wire stripper strip this wire and you can see what i'm talking about 
Okay, so we have two different kind of strippers. Here are some manual wire strippers. And I'm not gonna use the word automated, but here are some fancier wire strippers. So what I wanna do is I just wanna go ahead and I wanna put that in. And there you go. We have stripper wire, and that looks to be about the appropriate amount uh, for this particular task. So let me go ahead and line this up and I'll come back and show you what I'm doing. So when we go ahead and we crimp these wires, this first piece here, that is to hold this to your insulation. And then up here, there's another piece that will crimp, and that is to hold that wire down and create what is called a physical connection. So, and it doesn't look like this goes into the slot to interfere. So it looks like it's just about perfect. Let's go ahead and get this crimped. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the part that grips the insulation right here at the end of the red. You can see that. And because I don't have so many hands, what I'm going to do is just give it a quick little pinch to kind of help it hold on there so I can get that into the larger portion of the crimpers. Okay, you can see here that it's in there and once it is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a squeeze and then here you can see I do this you can see how it has squeezed and fixed itself there it actually crimped this part too which I didn't expect um, and that is the portion that holds the mechanical connection to the wire itself. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give that one one more squeeze. All right, there we go. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to put some heat shrink on here. So let's take a look at that and see how, how that's gonna work out for us. Okay, so we talked briefly about these pieces of insulating material that I have. And uh, what I can do is I can just slide this over the back of the cable and it comes up over here. And I have that. So now when this is connected onto my battery, we have some protection there. Uh, this does slide around and it comes loose. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of uh, heat shrink on here to help hold it all together and keep it secure. But uh, before I do that, let me go ahead and I'm going to make the black cable. Hinky. <clears throat> All right, so let's figure out what our options are for heat shrink. So let me go get the heat shrink box. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of this heat shrink and I slid it over the end of the cable and I came up and I covered the bottom part of this. Now this is glue lined heat shrink and I don't want to mess with that too much. But here we have our Harbor Freight Drill Master and this is actually a heat gun. So let me go ahead and turn this thing on. But now we have our two pieces uh, more secured with this glue lined heat shrink holding that in place. So let's take a look at our battery and we are going to connect this one to the positive and then we're going to connect this one to the negative. So what I want to do at this point is I'm going to put another piece of heat shrink right about here. And what that'll do is it'll make this more of a joined cable so they're separate so they're connected. And then we're going to come back and put our Anderson power poles on this end. Okay, so we have a piece of heat shrink here. And again, this piece is just to hold all of these cable stuff together. Now it's time for the power pole side. Okay, so now we want to get our cable ready for the power pole connectors. And the first thing I do is I like to use these little rubber boots on here. I, I find that it gives more stability to the, uh, to the power pole connectors, and it also gives it a cleaner look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm just going to cut the end of this boot off. And there you go. And so the first thing I'll do is I'll take this boot, and I will slip it over. 
And then the next thing I'm going to do is take some heat shrink because I'm going to also want to seal everything up with my heat shrink. So let me go ahead and slide that on. All right, now what we need to do is we need to strip these cables like we did before. And there's one. And then there's two. Okay, and what we need now are some power pole connectors. And I keep mine in this jar. So we're going to need a red one. We're going to need a black one. And we're going to need these parts. I'm not sure what they're called. I call them spoons, but I'm not sure that that is the right, the right term for these. And the other thing I can't stress enough is, is that you need legitimate power pole crimps. I've seen so many different people say, I can crimp mine with what, you know, and they, they always have problems with it. Um, these are like 40 bucks for the crimper, so they're not cheap. And I get that, but um, they work insanely well. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to drop this in here. And then I'm just going to slightly tighten. And then what I want to do is I want to take my cable or my wire and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put it in there. And then once it's in, I'm just going to squeeze this down. And voila, there is one power pole connector crimped. Let me go ahead and do this one, the black one, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put the end pieces on. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that our power poles are oriented correctly. So what I do is on the left-hand side, I have red spoon down. So I want to do the same thing when I put this one together. So go ahead and set that over there. So here's the spoon, and this is going to be pointing down. So I get my power pole connector, which is right here. And then I have to find the part. This, is the other, this goes underneath the spoon, which is going to face down. So I just go ahead and I put that in there, snap it in, and we're done. So I'm going to do the same thing on the, on the black side. Now, one of the things I'm going to tell you is, is that be careful when you do this, because if you get it wrong and you put these on, uh, they're, uh, they're impossible to get off almost. I don't know if somebody in the comments are going to be like, I, ape, I get them off all the time. So here we go. Snap it in there, and then what we're going to do now is, is that we're going to marry these together. And again, I want to make sure that my orientation is correct. So it's going to be right. Uh, black is on the right. Red is on the left. Spoon down. These have little cutouts where I can just slide them together. And there we go. So what I want to do is I want to slide up my heat shrink. And I'm going to, I'm going to heat shrink these two together. And that's going to help me with some uh, rigidity to my cable. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, that part is done. And now we are going to slide the boot up. And this boot is taking some, some wrangling. But uh, there we go. We've got it. And so what I want to do is I'm just going to do a quick test with my other, there we go, they snap together just fine. Now, what we're going to do in a different video is I'm going to take this battery and I'm going to connect these up. And then we are going to take this other cable that I made and feed this battery into a battery tester. And when we do that test, we'll find out if this thing has the advertised amperage that it does. Um that it advertises or uh, if it doesn't. And we're also going to charge this up. So anyhow, that's really it. Hopefully uh, it helped you out. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.